Hello, and welcome back for part 7 of this series on creating games using Construct 2. In part 6, we added some bonus points to our game, so we added some gold that was falling from the sky and gave us an additional 50 points. In part 7, we're going to make our, our game a little bit harder and add uh, the turret behavior. So we're going to add a couple of turrets that are going to be shooting at us. So not only do we have to stay on the platforms, but we also have to dodge the turrets, the bullets that are coming from the turrets. So let me get back to our game and let me just run it again. So we remember kind of where we are. We've got this uh, bonus points of this gold falling around and we can collect that. And we just kind of see how long we can last. So we're gonna make this a little more challenging and by adding a turret to our game. So um, I'm just gonna create a simple sprite again. So I will make sure, so go back to my layout and I'll double click to add a sprite and I'll name it turret and press insert. And I'll use the crosshair to put it in the top left for now. And I'll resize it with the diagonal arrow up there to let's say 30 by 30. So a pretty small turret and I'm going to give him a kind of a, a dark yellow color. So once I've got that color I'm going to X out of there and actually instead of having him be at the top I'm going to have him be at the at the bottom left. And now so we, we just have a simple sprite right now but we can add a behavior to this turret sprite called the turret behavior. So let me go into behaviors and click add and then scroll on down until I find turret. See there it is in the bottom right. And X that out. And what this turret does is it allows you to target in on an object. So that target will be our player. It will rotate to face our player and it will shoot however, however often we tell it to. So let's take a look at some of the properties over here for this turret. The range um, is set to 300 initially. So that means that my player has to be within 300 pixels. Uh, let's see if I can kind of guesstimate what that is. Somewhere maybe in there uh, where our player has to be within that range before this turret will shoot. But we want him to kind of cover all of this. So I'm going to give him a much larger range. Let me go back and select it. I'm going to give him a 3000 range just so he's always kind of shooting at us to make it a little harder. Right now his rate of fire is one. And this is, I think this is, let's see, the lower number we have here, the faster it shoots. So this would be however many seconds between each bullet that it shoots. So right now it's one second. If we did 0 0.5, it would shoot twice a, twice a second. Uh, this rotate has it rotate to face, like I was saying, our player. Rotate speed, you can change that, how fast it rotates. Um, Let's say if there's multiple instances of its targeted object, it can choose to shoot the first one in range or the one that's nearest by. There's also a predictive aim. So if my player is moving from right to left, right to left, right to left, and he, he can kind of calculate that velocity and shoot ahead of where my player is at that time. Um, projectile speed is going to be how fast the projectile moves and a couple of other things. So before we go to our event sheet and add some logic to set its target to our player and then to actually create the bullets, we need to create a bullet sprite. So this one's going to be pretty simple. Again, we'll just double click on our screen and then we'll do a sprite and then we'll select, or we'll name it bullet. So insert and then I will create it down here because we don't want it to be on our screen from the beginning because we only want there to be bullets when we shoot from the turret. Um, so this one I'll resize to 10 by 5 and I'll give it a black color and then X out of that. So now we've got one of these bullets down here. Um, as you might expect this bullet object will need the bullet behavior because it's going to move in that constant uh, velocity. So we'll come in and we will add behavior and plus and then search for bullet okay so we've got our bullet and our turret sprites now we need to hop over to the event sheet to add the logic for 
for how and when to shoot. So let's get in. And we already have the event for the on start of layout here. And on start of layout, we can just add another action to set the target of our turret to our player. So let's add action. And let's see. Let's go select turret. And if we scroll down, there should be some actions. Yep, some turret actions. So there's an add object to target. So let's do that and we'll choose our player as the target. Press OK and done. So now on the start of the layout it's locked on to our player. Now we need to actually do the shooting. So based on, let's go back to the layout real quick, this turret it says the rate of fire is 1 so that means it's going to shoot a bullet every second and every second it's going to trigger an event, an event called on shoot. So let's go in and add that event here so let's add event and then turret and scroll down to let's see so one of these turret events on shoot and again that's gonna happen every second uh, depending on uh, this rate of fire variable over here so every time this turret goes to shoot we need to create a bullet object so we'll go to add action system create object if I can type create object and I'll choose my bullet object and then we want to shoot it from the actual turret so we'll use the turrets X and Y coordinate so turret dot X and turret dot Y so again we're using the turrets X and Y coordinates so that the bullet looks like it's coming from the turret alright so we'll press done there and then we also want to set the angle of motion for the bullet and since the turret is going to be rotating to face the player we can set our angle of motion to the angle of the turret itself so let's add another action and let's go to bullet and scroll down to these bullet um, actions and set angle of motion and we'll set angle of motion to turret dot angle so each object in, in here is going to have angle, it's going to have an X and Y coordinate, all these different things. We just need to go in and know how to access them. So we're setting the angle of the bullet to the angle of the turret. Alright, so let me run this and we'll see what we have so far. Let me pull it up. So now you can see these bullets are moving. They're coming at us. And I have to dodge them, but if I actually hit one, nothing happens, right? So we have to go in and handle that um, collision, just like we did the collision with the with the gold. So let's go in and add that. And so we'll do add event and player on collision with another object, and that object is going to be the bullet. And once we do that, we just want to we want to lose, right? So if you get hit by a bullet, you lose. So we can use the same restart layout up here. I can actually copy and paste it. So if I control C, I can come down to the event and paste it there. And now it appears as an action within that event. So let's run it one more time. Let's see if I can pull it up. There we go. And now if I hit one of these bullets, if I can, there. So I got one of those bullets and restarted, and there it is. All right, so one thing you might notice is that since I'm on these moving platforms, it's not shooting very well towards me. It's shooting higher, it's shooting at where I was. So we can use the predictive aim to have it aim towards our where our player will be and make it a little harder on us and make the turret a little smarter. So let's go in and select our turret and we'll put on, we'll put this predictive aim to yes and let's run it again and we should see now that it's kind of guessing where we will be based on our motion. So it's not perfect, but it does make it a little bit harder because before, none of the bullets would ever really get to us. So this is 
being a little bit smarter, making it a little bit harder on us based on where we're jumping around. And there it got me once. So again, it's not perfect, but adds a little more complexity to our game, makes it a little more interesting, gives it another level of, um, of a challenge. So that's it for the turret, and stay tuned for the next part.